He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. If I tried to tell it all, we'd be here all day. Amen. Because he's done so much. Our scripture reading, Psalms 51, verse 1 through 8. Let us read in unison. Verse 1, let us read. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to the loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou might be justified when thou speakest, and let me clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bonds which thou hast broken may rejoice.
praises go up. Yeah. Blessings go up. The Bible says God in heaven that praises yeah. of his people. Yeah. Some of us can't get our blessings because yeah. we have yet to praise him. Yeah. Hold our throne of grace, asking for preaching power. Yes. I ask, Father, that you hide me behind thy prophet. Yes. That people see Jesus yes. and not me. Yes. That it be the words of Jesus that comes out of my mouth. Yes. Father, I ask that you would just bless these inner yes. yes. That the words that come out of my mouth will have them believing out better than they were when they came in. I ask, Father, that you anoint me with thy Holy Spirit, yes, yes. that you fill me with thy Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. I ask, Father, that you touch my mind, that I may think right, right. Yes. that you touch my tongue, that I may speak right, yes. and you fill my heart with your love, yes. that it may overflow to these your people. Yes. I ask, Father, that everything be said and done, be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Yes. Mostly, Father, I ask that thy will be done, yes. and thy purpose be fulfilled. Yes. It's in the mighty name of Jesus I do pray. I love you. We love you. We love you. And amen. 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 And amen. I greet you this afternoon in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life. And I'd like to tell you, he's the head of your life, brother, you accepted or not because he is the one that the father gave all power into his hand. He is the savior of the world. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It ain't got nothing to do with whether you accepted or not. It's just the truth. So he is the head of all of I thank him for the invite. I thank him for those kind words, and, yeah, yeah. and it's true, I, I, I we was having a prayer vision, and up Trump, Elder Gibbs, and he came out, he said, I, I, I just want to be a part, and, 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 and we have had this kinder spirit that has bonded it together, and I thank God for it. Little did we know that our pastor and verse was on the same day. When he, when he called and asked me, I, I immediately said yes because, because of the, the brotherhood and the, and the love that we share. And, and, and this one thing, see, we have to learn that we have to support and show love one to another. Because I don't care, this, I don't care what you say. You can say you love me all you want, but if I don't see no evidence, do not. Some folks are fools, you're talking about, you, they are said they love you. But every time you look around, what you see, it don't look like love to you. So, 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 so listen, when folks tell you they love you, don't just listen to what they say. Look at what you see. Because God so loved the world, and then what is that? See, see, love is an action word. Kind of love. I don't fool with that. <laughs> I don't even love my wife with that. You know why? Because it's up and down, it curves and goes, it fluctuates. I don't need that. I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. If you love me like that, okay. But I ain't worried about it because I know the Bible, you might not like it. <laughs> but when you love, when you love, it's gone. It don't change. It's everlasting. It has some action behind it. And, and then it really has a true meaning. Amen. You know, man, Pastor Gibbs met and, 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 and this is first year, but from the time we met, we done had that, that love that we showed one another. He'll call me, I'll call him, and we'll talk. So I just want to throw it out there and put that in your pocket. Right. Somebody out there gonna tell you they love you. And every time you look around me, you see that look like little. Oh, but I won't be long. I won't be long. I want to thank my wife and uh, children for coming here. Uh, 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 
lot of my church members, they come because they get ready for my <laughs> anniversary and yeah. thing, and I thank them for that. And, and, and so we just welcome God into uh, 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 brother ministers and to my cousin. I thank y'all for having me. Because we could have invited anybody. Mm -hmm. And then when a person welcomes you into their house, you 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 got to show uh, gratitude. You got to show them that you are grateful because uh, they didn't have to do that. Amen. So I thank you all for being here. I won't be long, but let me put this out here first. Anything I say, don't blame me. I'm just the message. I might say some stuff that you might not like. I might even say some stuff that you don't agree with. But, 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 but I'm just a messenger. I'm going to only tell you what God has sent me to say. Uh, because I, I, I like doing that because, you know, people get mad at preachers and pastors because they tell them stuff they don't like to hear. But a true man of God will tell you the truth whether you like it or not. Which bring me, which bring me to our message, which I understand comes from 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, we're going to read verse 17 and 18. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Well, I, I, I don't tend to be long because my wife told me I got to go home and get ready because, you know, uh, all married and when you're married, your wife, you want to boss you around. <laughs> And then, you know, it's our anniversary and I got to go home. She got to dress me up like a little dog. <laughs> but I thank God for my wife. I got a good wife. And I, and I, I, I don't see it in, 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 in madness or frustration. I see it out of love because uh, uh, the Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good wife. And I found a wife. Amen. That, that, that tell you something, man, don't get you no woman find your wife. one of his favorite proteges and he wanted to instruct Timothy about some things. It, it, it talked about beginning and, and, and verse 5 uh, how you're supposed to treat the widows uh, uh, of the congregation. That, that the elder widows that you're supposed to look out for you, you're supposed to make sure that they've been taken care of. Uh, and, and they said the younger women widows need to, you know, because of them you have to wipe them but it, it is about how you're supposed to take them, how you're supposed to treat the slave, the ones that you have under you. But this is talk about how you're supposed to treat the elders of the church. And, and, and it is, this text is talking about your preachers, your pastors, and things of the church. And, 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 and Paul was telling Timothy this because he wanted him to understand the right way to do things. I, I have found out that most people read the Bible and, and they talk about the Bible, but most people don't want to follow the instructions of the Bible. Most people, they, they get the Bible, they see what the Bible says, but they don't want to follow the instructions of the Bible, they want to do it like they want to do. And Paul wanted to make sure that Timothy understand, listen, you can't do things 
things like you want to do it. You must learn to do things according to the word of God. Because let me teach you this. You can do the will of God and call yourself doing the work of God, but if you're not doing it like God tells you to do it, you still ain't pleasing to God. You remember Matthew, a lot of people be coming for God at the end of time and he said, Lord, Lord, then I preach in your name. Lord, Lord, then I prophesy in your name. Lord, Lord, then I do. And he gonna say, wait a minute. He gonna say, wait a minute, get away from me. He said, I never see other words. But it's a 
whole lot of church folks. You might have a hundred members, might not have a five Christian. You got, you got nine five church folks in there, raising hell, trying to tell you what to do. But, but not every shadow is keeping on the pew now. <laughs> see, see, cause what I'm trying to tell you, it don't matter unless you're doing it according to the will of God. See, I, that's what I'm trying to say. See, what Paul was trying to tell, tell me what I'm trying to tell you. See, listen, you can come to church all you want. You can shout hallelujah, you can jump up and down, you can praise God, you can pray till the ceiling fall down. But unless you are doing things according to the will of God, God ain't listening to it. See, all the acts of faith and, 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 and the obedience in God. But see, a lot of like to make sacrifice. But God said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And see, but what I'm trying to tell you, see, you got to learn to treat your pastor. According to the will of God. And according to the words of God, a pastor deserves double honor. That means he loves double the respect. That means he uh double the reverence. He uh double the recognition. He deserves double the walk. They, you know, most folks think the pastor get rich out the church. We can't take care of pastor. Pastor to get a new car, have the folks in the church get mad. <laughs> We paid him too much. Well, according to the scripture right now, it, it, it said a label is worth his reward. If he labels in the gospel, if he are doing the will of God, then he deserves it. Yes. He deserves it. See, see, quit treating the pastor like, see, three, three quick things. I'm going to go because uh, I, 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 I got to go and I, I, I don't want to take you too long, I just want to give you something that never on so, so it'll grow inside you. I just want to plant this seed inside you. Okay. Three quick things. See, the double honor and the way you do a pastor is not, first thing, is not according to the way you think. Most of us think we're supposed to treat the pastor. We think in our mind how we're supposed to treat the pastor. But according to the will of God, according to this, you supposed to respect the pastor. You supposed to give the pastor honor. You supposed to love the pastor. It ain't cause you think how, how you think about it. Just, just bring back around how, how when Saul was in battle and, and he was there to death. And, and his Abelak decided to, to, to go tell David the lie that he killed Saul. See, he thought it was a good thing to put his hand on God's anointing. See, you with God as a preacher. See, some of us don't understand why we are going through trouble right now. Because we were thinking we can treat the pastor in a kind of way. And I'm here to tell you, according to the word of God, you can't. You can't. You wonder how far you might be sick. You might be sick. Because you were like me and back that mom and talking about the pastor. Why I don't come up that See, it ain't according to how you think. It's the way God said do it. And God said you must give your
got a, it ain't about how you think about it. Right. Some folks say, uh, Pastor, how to be married. Pastor Gibbons ain't married. Some folks feel like, oh, he be looking at the wind. <laughs> he ain't right here. See, see, it ain't what you think. It's according to the will and the word of God. See, you, and then you'll think yourself in trouble. You'll be like never. You'll be leopard. You'll be white as snow. You'll be like this apple that we had in the cold. Where Saul was about to death and he wanted me to kill him. So I, 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 I struck him and he died. David said, I'll kill him. See, because he thought it was a good. See, listen, you, you, you got to quit thinking about how to treat your pastor and treat him according to the will of God. The Bible said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet on my God said, I deal with him. I call him. You got to quit. See, see, you are. See, I know, pastor. I, I go through, I can't tell. I have both pat me on my back and, uh, and stand me in the back at the same time. We, you know what? We the one have to pray for you. We the one go to God on your behalf. When you're sick, we the one go to come to the hospital. When somebody dies, we the one have to pray. We the one pray and pray. But here you be thinking bad things about it. You need to learn to give your pastor the honor, the recognition that is due. And it ain't according to how you think. See, too much of thinking too much. <laughs> Because the Bible says the foolishness of God confound the wildness of man. That means you think you know what's right. God don't even you, you ain't even got a clue. He said his thoughts is high above our thoughts. His ways are not our way. We should even see other words what I'm saying. What the God, what the Bible said do, and according he he do double up. Because not only do he have to preach, he have to study the word of God. Yeah, so yeah. when when you, you you ever ask your pastor a question and, and, and look for an answer, you ever had something you wanted to know and you had to go to your pastor? You ever have well, just feeling something and your pastor just got up and said, That's because we have to study, we have to meditate. See, it, it, it ain't no easy job being a pastor. That's why, you know, uh, 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 everybody can't be a pastor. Oh, pastor deserves da da It's not according to what you think. And seven, seven, it ain't how you feel. Yes. It ain't how you feel. You, you can feel however you want about the pastor. But according to the word of God, it's the a way you supposed to treat the pastor. Just like I said, this, this, this man thought that he could kill Saul because he thought it was a good thing. You can think and feel like you can talk about it, mess with the pastor if you want to. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. And see what God come see. The God of ten, he said, vengeance is his mind. He said, don't mess with mine. He said, don't listen. You, you cannot mess with a child of God and think Amen. God ain't gonna come see. He said, listen, how you think you being human can give good gifts to your children and think I ain't gonna take care of mine? How you think if something right now, if somebody mess with your child, they will mess with you right now. Sometimes we be feeling bad, but when we be feeling bad, we still have to pray for you. We still be thinking about you. We still be calling on God for you. It ain't about how you feel. Forget how you feel. And see, because you will mess around and let your feelings get in the way you want them. You be one of them people that come before God and be talking about how you saw him in the clock. You talk about how you you saw him, Zion saw him, how much time you paid in the church and, and, and how long you've been in the church. And God said, yeah, you was in the, in the church, but wasn't no church inside of you. See, the word of God got to come alive inside you. It ain't about how you feel. That's how God, Jesus told Jesus, uh, uh, allowed when Jesus, they crucified Jesus. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. See, you, too often our feelings get in the way. Pastor said something, you know what, you ready? 
do it. They impeach. Yes. Pastor says something you don't like. You don't come to church. That's yes. right. Pastor says something you like. You get your buddies together and start yes. talking about. You better forget how you feel. Because the card to the word of God, you need to honor the man. Yes. Yes. As that shooter by the woman when, when her son was dying, how she called on and he brought her back to life. As about the will of life, when, when she was about to run out of uh, all and, and said they they come die. The high, he, he blessed them and they pulled the all. And the all they run out till they feel all them things. Yeah. See, the man of God is the, the one that God followed his blessing through. Yes. yes. And you talk about how you feel. <laughs> you better forget about your healing. Forget about how you feel. Yeah. He both, see, because if a pastor don't say something that make you say ouch. He ain't preaching. If a pastor don't say nothing that make you say, oh, he ain't tight teaching you. So when a pastor do something, it's it, it supposed to hurt you. It's it, it supposed to hit you. Folks be perfect. You talk about people. I, say, I ain't talking about nobody. If, if it's it, that's like I told you. If I say something, I ain't talking about you. If you the one in the church raised all the hell, and if you the one in the church talking about the pastor, don't blame me. All I'm here, I'm here to tell you what God said. And what God you keep on doing it if you want. God said that ain't right. God said you shouldn't treat your pastor like that. See, I keep trying to tell you. You can take this and read it. Because I know folk can quote this whole time. You can look at the scripture. But if you walk behind them, you won't see never mess in hell. They can tell you what the scripture said. They can talk about the scripture. But when you look at their life, it ain't nothing in there according to how these words said feel. And if you ain't doing it according to the will of God, you ain't doing that. And according to the will of God, you should honor this man. You should give him double reverence. You should give him double reward. You should give him double respect. Because he, he's doing it. Not because you think he ought to have it. Not because you feel like he deserves it. But because God say so. Right. We got to learn to start doing what God say yeah. and not how we feel, not what we think. We got to learn to start living and being true children of God. Amen. Amen. And last, and last, and last, and I'm finna go. It ain't about what you choose. See, a lot of us think the pastor ought to get and we do to for the pastor what we choose to do. We choose to pay him this X amount of money. We choose to, to give him a, a day that that he can celebrate for being the pastor. We choose to do it. But let's let me tell you, it ain't about what you choose to do. It's about what God said you're supposed to do. See, too often we ain't doing enough for the preacher. Some of us think we're doing too much, but we ain't doing too much. Just like Jezebel thought that she was going to do to the prophet, and, and how the prophet of Baal thought that they were going to do to Elijah with our Mount Carmel, but that they thought that they were better than him. Jezebel said after he killed her that she was out to kill him. But Jezebel had to fall from a woman and die, blood be splattered all over. See, you can choose to treat the man of God the wrong way, and God gonna make you pay for it. It ain't about how you choose to treat the man of God. It's how God say you're supposed to choose God. Quit thinking that you make the choice of what happened to this man or how he lived. Because God gonna bless it just like he did Elijah. He'll send a raven to feed him. Amen. He ain't got to worry about that. Because God is gonna supply his every need. He is called and anointed by God. He is appointed this day to preach his God. God the one made him your God. God the one sent him now. And if you get behind him and support him, you will be blessed. Your Pay. But what God said, you got to honor. Yeah. 
reverence yeah. and reward the man of God yeah. for yeah. what he has done. Yeah. See, he deserved double. Yeah. It ain't about what you think. Yeah. Quit thinking about what you think and let other folk tell you what they think. It, it, it's so often folk in your ear. Get them folks out of the ear that tell you bad things oh, about the pastor. Yeah. Get them folks out of the way who got them, them sad. If somebody come Talk about how they feel about the pastor. If they ain't good, I don't want to tell them, okay, you keep it to yourself. Keep that mess to yourself. Let it, let it fast in you. Because the Bible said, no matter what a man do to you, you for forgiving for everything. It said, even if somebody that's fighting to misuse you, you for to be good to them. It said, love your enemy. So how you going to mistreat your pastor? How you going to look down on your pastor? How you ain't going to show reverence to the man of God? Okay. I just come to tell you. Is in. He deserved yeah. double honor. Yeah. It ain't a call to how you think. Right. It ain't a call to how you feel. It ain't a call to your choice, but it's a call to the Word of God. When you start treating man of God according to the will of God, then the blessings will start coming down. When they were in the wilderness, when they needed water, they had to go to Moses. When the water was built, Moses had to turn the tree. When they wanted to be if Moses had to call on God to rain down mountain. See, it's the man of God that brings the blessings of God to his people. God sent high and he looked low. But he used the man of God as his messenger. He used the man of God to deliver his blessing. He used the man of God to bless his people. And if you are God against the man of God, just like he told Abraham, he said, I bless them that bless you. And I'm going to curse them that curse you. Some of y'all got a curse on your life. You wonder how far your church may act right. You have to wonder why your body keeps going wrong. You have to why you keep going from one problem to one problem. That's because you ain't treated the man of God right. Because we the one that intercede with God. We the one that pray for you. So you got to understand. Quit thinking about how you think and how you feel and the thing you choose. And start treating the, the man of God would double up. Show him the honor and respect that do him. And God will honor you. He said, if any man that give a prophet a drink of water, he'll give him a proper water. He also told us that anything that you have done to the least of deeds, you have done it unto me. He said, as I come, he said, bless the those who have done it because you have been blessed by the man of God. Amen. And you won't to be blessed. Amen. Honor the man of God. Amen. Those in the church that talk about the pastor are putting your mouth on the pastor. You need to shut up. Right. You need to watch it. Right. You can keep on talking. Right. Yeah. You, you, you know, cause he called God is the one that chastises us. God is the one that straightens us out. God is the one that put us in check. You can't put us in check. But all you need to learn to do is to treat the man of God according to the word of God, according to the will of God, and according to the love of God. Quit picking them and down your path. We have the big folk to sing and cry. We have the main folk to worship. We have to get the people. We have we have to fight with the deacons, the be deacons. They say they deacons, but I ain't talking about this church. I know y'all ain't right. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about other churches, my church. Sometimes I have to open the door, I have to lock up, I have to mop, I have to sweep, but, but I got deacons. I, I got to tell I got but, but see, see, but to be we talk about the past. See, listen, you must learn. To give your pastor the honor, the reverence, and the respect that's due to him. Not because you think so. Not because you feel he deserves it. Not because you choose to. But because the Word of God tells you that is what you're supposed to do. Start treating the man of God according to the will of God. Amen. 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 Amen.